Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we met up with Professor Frankly and showed him the magical map which leads us to the Thousand Year Door. But we can't actually do anything with the Thousand Year Door yet because we need some crystal stars. So in this episode, we're gonna go out and search for a crystal star. Sounds like a good plan if you ask me. You didn't ask me? Well too bad, this is my LP and my rules. Yeah, I'm getting all rough and rugged, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that in every single episode. But, yeah. It's not all sweet peachy keen midnight and beyond anymore. Now I'm a tough dude. I'm a bad dude. I say it past my bedtime and I say gosh darn it all the heck in school. Yeah, we're living on the edge or something like that. But seriously, let's get back down here and they're going to go we're going to go ahead and explore some things that we weren't able to see in the previous episode. For example, this person over here, this is Dazzle! No, she is not a very crummy capture card from way back in the day. She is a person that you could trade star pieces to. Basically, I don't even remember all the merchants' names, like the Merle, Merlovely, Mer... Merly, Merlot. Um, basically she's that equivalent of a person. You can give her star pieces and she will give you certain items for it, or rather certain badges. We got the Attack FXY badge, it just changes the sound effects of Mario's attacks, which is pretty lame. Chill out badge, which never succumb to a first strike. Enemies can first strike us as well. Thankfully, we haven't run into that quite yet. So if they ever attack you first, then you don't have to worry about it. Pretty lucky, which is an item we already have. So if you want a second one and stack the power of them, having two pretty lucky badges equipped at the same time is very, very powerful. I would very much recommend it. Happy flower, which makes it so you gain one HP at the end of every turn. Happy heart makes it so you gain one HP after at the end of every turn. Happy Heart Partner Badge makes it so your partner gets HP at the end of every turn because they do have HP in this game. Item Hog makes it uh, more likely for enemies to drop items after battle. Heart Finder makes it, uh, it makes it so enemies will more likely drop hearts at the end of battle. Flower Finder more likely to drop uh, flowers at the end of battle. Peekaboo Badge which makes it so enemies HP will be visible. This does not fill out an enemy's uh, log in the tattle log. So if you're trying to get a complete tattle log like me, you cannot just use the peekaboo badge and have it magically fill them out for you. That's not how it works. So keep that in mind. The quick change badge, which is super helpful, allows you to switch between party members without wasting a turn. That's going to be very helpful for me specifically because I'm trying to uh, get all the tattle logs and I do not want to use Gumbella throughout the entire stinking game. Flower Saver Partner Badge, it makes it so your partners will use one less FP for their attacks. Flower Saver makes it so Mario uses one less FP for their for his attacks. Power Plus Partner makes your uh, partner's attack up by one, and Power Plus makes Mario's attack go up by one. Pretty sure we'll be able to get all of these in due time, but for now we are just going to get the Pretty Lucky Badge. Trade Pretty Lucky for Sweet Sweet Star Pieces, how's 3 sound? Need 2BP to wear this one, we can't wear it right now, but it's good to pick it up while we are here. Uh, can we trade no more? No thank you. Change your mind, thanks to my guy, my star piece collection has grown. Maybe we could trade again sometime, yeah? Uh, maybe, we got a star piece back here actually. Uh, do we have enough to purchase anything? We only have two, no we do not. So, I'm going back and forth as to whether or not I want to collect all the badges in the game. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Right now we can't do anything about this stone column that has fallen over, so we'll ignore that for the time being. Uh, if we go in here, hello. Aha! Uh -huh. Welcome, Mario! I am Mer Lovely, the lovely fortune teller. So all the merchants actually return in this game. Uh, seen with my amazing abilities, wh that which you seek is my humble job. The light in the shining stars will light that which I wish to see. Aha! Uh -huh. So, shall I see something for you? Basically, she will tell you where you're supposed to go if you're lost. But this is a let's play, so you don't need that. You have your good old Uncle Midnight and Beyond here for ya. So, we don't need this information, thankfully. If you do get lost, however, then you can just pay for your, uh, for her services and you'll be good to go. Hopefully. Possibly. Otherwise, it was sort of a waste of money for you to do that. But something else that I forgot to do, just to pad out the video a little bit longer and to delay the inevitable story progression. Because we can't have story progression in Midnight and Beyond LP. No, that'd be far too horrible. While we're on the subject of badges, something that I wanted to do is go back up to the rooftops of Rogueport and enter this shop, which is now 11 o'clock apparently, so we could enter. We got this shopper merchant right here. Welcome, welcome. Feel free to look around. A big welcome to you. Welcome to the lovely house of badges. Not the house of mouse, unfortunately. So, what can I do for you? I'm a buy-in. What kind of badges are interest you? Special deals? If you're looking for the special deals, you gotta find them on the shelf. Otherwise, stand in front of the badge you want and press A. Oh, uh, what happens if I say I'm here for other badges? You have some in your inventory. We have Last Stand, which drops the damage Mario receives by one half when he's in danger. 
Basically, when you're in, when you have five HP or less, then you're in danger. Last stand partner badge that works for your partner. Super appeal gets it, makes it so you get more star points at the whenever you appeal to the audience. And unsimplifier makes action commands hard but earns more star power. So kind of if you want to give yourself a little challenge, or if you are very good at the action commands and you want more uh, star power uh, more easily, that is the way to do it. Come again. The badges you get here get switched out at basically every time you come and visit. So we have the power jump badge, stomps on a single enemy using lots of attack power. Happy flower, which we already saw before. Piercing blow, which delivers damage that pierces the enemy defenses. So if an enemy has a point of defense, you don't have to worry about it with this thing. Uh, FP drain, drops Mario's attack power by one, but regain one, eight, one FP per attack. Not very great. And the simplifier, which is the opposite, makes action commands easy, but earns less star power. So if you want the game to be a bit easier for you, but you lose a bit of star power that you're gaining up, then you could use it for that reason. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to be getting every single badge in this game, but if I do, then I guess this is where you can get some of them. And I like how Goombell is just bouncing back there. <laughs> Looks very funny. But now that's taken care of, we can head down here, and I'm sorry I jumped on that Nomadi Mouse's head. I really like the Nomadi Mouse, they look super cool, and I like that. I don't- I wish they appeared in more games than just Paper Mario. I think they do appear in other games? They appear in Mario Party 8, don't they? I know that's a very weird and specific game for them to appear in, but I do remember them in that game. Uh, but nothing else left to do but head down here, I suppose. And progress through the story. So horrible, I have to progress through the story. I'm Midnight and Beyond, though. I like making things long and having them take forever. And that came out very, very wrong. I apologize for that, but whatever. Use the paper airplane ability to fly over here. And hey, what the heck is he doing here? He's back for more, I see. And I didn't get the action command, so I actually have to fight. Oh, two spike Goombas. So Goombella cannot help us out in this battle. But it doesn't matter because we'll be good to go. We will show off our badges in a later uh, part. I will just show off the appeal right here, just in tactics. Use the appeal and your partner does a thing that gives you star power. Pretty basic. And I didn't get the super guard, god darn it. I know I'm going to make a lot of stinging people angry by not ever using the regular guard, but that's just how I play. I never use the regular guard, I always just try for the super guard. And I kind of prefer it that way because I'm more trained in it despite what I'm showing right now. And it gives me a reward, it gets me uh, negate all damage, and I get to do damage back, which is very nice. Now we'll use the paper airplane ability, and we're good to go into this other area. And there's a very non-suspicious looking tentacle just hanging out around here. That thing's kind of soggy, that's what she said. No, uh, and there's a pole right here. Okay, I'm just making a bunch of gross jokes and stuff, so nothing left to do, but interact with it. Bloop bloop, ouch, that hurt. Wouldn't it be a Paper Mario game without a bite with a blooper, apparently, as now it is a tradition. Brrr, who just up and whacked someone's tootsies like that? Brrr, brrr, somebody with some serious moxie, that's who. Bloop, bloop, brrr, would you look at that, it's some saucy mustache guy. Bloop, 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 he's in a world of hurt. Blue, 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 blue. I'll give him a taste of the old tentacle trample. Hey, Mario, you remember what Professor Frankly told us, right? You can press Y to change our attack order. If your HP drops, you can press Y to put me in front. Can't flee this fight because it's a boss fight. Now, in the first Paper Mario game, we fought the blooper multiple times throughout the underground portion of that game. But in this game, this is our one and only fight with the big old blooper daddy himself and his right and left tentacles. We can't actually hit the blooper himself right now, so... We'll have Goombella tattle on just the blooper and see what this guy is made of, besides sushi. That's a blooper and a really super humongous one too. Ew, it's all slimy. I just totally can't stand slimy, nasty, icky things. G-R-O-S-S, -S, gross. Max HP is 12, attack is 1, and defense is 0. It attacks with tentacles and ink. Once you damage both its tentacles, it'll fall down, and then it's attack time. By the way, the tentacles each have 3 HP. Now relax and house in on that slimy, nasty blooper. However you want to word it is your agenda, Goombella, not mine. Bloop bloop, hey mustache! Bloop 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 bloop, you think I, you're thinking I taste good, aren't you? Admit it! Bloop 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 bloop, yeah, you want a snack on these tentacles, don't you? Eh, no, I don't have the bloop, you're darn bloopin'. Oh my god, these are such great responses, you know I'd rather bloop. Bloop 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 bloop. 
<laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Uh, the Pretty Lucky badge, it actually only works for Mario. I'm pretty sure there's a separate badge, the Pretty Lucky Partner badge as well. So, unfortunately, Goombell does not get to benefit from the, uh, Pretty Lucky badge, which is kind of lame. So, whatever. Go and jump on this right tentacle. It's sort of, uh, hard to pinpoint exactly when we wanted to press the A button, but we did it fine just right there. That was a sentence. And now he's uh, got only one tentacle, and he slaps us in the face, but I counter with it! See, I'm the king of counters! I'm getting back into the groove of things. Now would be a good time to show off our power smash! Hammer of single enemies and lots of attack power. Now that he's on the ground, we could do just that. And those are all the stylish commands you could do for that attack, which is very, very cool. And he got hit with a bucket! Oh, look at his eyes! Oh my god, I don't think I've ever seen that before. He looks super cute like that. Oh my god, I'm getting really lucky with these. Let's go ahead and do that now. And now he's down to 5 HP. He looks so stinking adorable with his googly eyes. And he's in. Oh my god, he's still googly! I stinking love it. Oh my god. Uh, enough of me getting super mushy about the googly bloobly. That's his new name. The googly, the googly bloobly. As he is now his official title. Go ahead and attack him one more time. Or two more times, I suppose. Na 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 I guess I have to do that every single time. It is very much required. And he is done. 20 star points if it was a Super Mario. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And ever so conveniently, we get these platforms and Goombella falls into the water. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering what happens if you fall in the water, you get hurt by a fish. And you take 1 HP of damage. And Goombella just falls in. Thankfully, she doesn't take damage, but... Uh, in the first game, I'm always going to be comparing the first and the second game. Uh, it's sort of a debate as to whether or not, like, I hear back and forth opinions on which P Paper Mario game is better. Obviously, both of them are fantastic, but I feel like Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is a game that has every single thing the first game has and so much more. So, I feel like people who grew up with the first one first, they played it first, then they're going to have an opinion over that. They're going to like that game over this one. But in my opinion, not just because I played this game first, but I truly think it is miles ahead of what the original gave us. So if you love that game and haven't seen this one, you're in for the ride of your life. And not just because we're on this little riding platform. But yeah, as I was trying to say, in the first game, you couldn't even go into water without the help of sushi. But in this game, we could just go right in, but we get hurt. So be mindful of that. But nothing else left to do, really, except to head down this warp pipe. In the next episode! Yeah, I'm gonna be a jerk about it because I like to have the titles of these episodes uh, set up in kind of an interesting way. I don't know, like, I want to make it seem, I was unsure if I wanted to have just regular episode titles, be like episode one, episode two. It was sort of easy to do in the first Paper Mario game, how uh, I only had one episode that was like used of backtracking. So even after we finished a chapter, I could still call it like chapter four, episode, whatever, and count it as part of that chapter. Cause it was like sort of an intermission part. I don't know what to label it as, but that was just, uh, this game is a lot more expansive and big, so I don't know how it's gonna work. It's just that I didn't want to have this episode be one as well, so I apologize if that's sort of annoying. Uh, this episode's kind of short in comparison to the first two. Maybe I could, like, combine all three episodes and make it into two. Who knows? I guess you'll know as soon as this goes up, but I apologize. I promise the next episode will be a lot more jam-packed with awesomeness. I guess the last thing I could show off real quick, even though we can't do anything about it, I'm just sure you're all dying to know is what is up with this shine sprite door. There's another, uh, elder in it. Welcome to the home of Merlon, the super magician. I foresaw your your arrival, but I did not foresee the sentence, which is why I messed up on it. I can aid you if you wish. With three shine sprites, I can power up your partners. Of course, that means I boost their attack power, but I also throw in a new move for free. So, which partner would you like me to power up? So, in the first paper mark, huh? You don't have enough shine sprites. Be gone, come back with more. So, we need to collect Shine Sprites in order to power up all of our party members. This is another thing I'm going to be doing for this LP. I will be getting every single Shine Sprite in this game. In the first Paper Mario game, there were just these power-up blocks scattered throughout the land that we used to power up our party members, but in this game, we could power them up by going to this house, which is very useful. But we need to get Shine Sprites before that happens, so... I suppose we gotta go ahead and get some stuff. I guess we could go ahead and explore some, uh, areas real quick before we get things started. Uh, the Trouble Center is the only place in the east side that other townsfolk come to. If the place is open when you're in the neighborhood, you should drop on in. It's open right now. Uh, Trouble Center, I'm out of the office. Please come again. Uh, I would have been able to show that, that off to expand the episode a little longer, but 
I guess not. There's just so many things I want to show off. I'm just so excited for this LP to unfold and not make it a stinking paper joke because this game is more classy than that. It just uses the paper aesthetic to its advantage of looking nice. It doesn't actually just acknowledge the fact that everything's made of paper 24-7 like a certain other Paper Mario game. I'm here to have fun. I'm not going to be mentioning that game over and over and over again every single second of the day. So we're just going to pretend that game doesn't exist and enjoy the game that we are in right now. So, now that all that's said and done, and I wasted a whole bunch of stinking time, we are going to end this episode off right now. Next time on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we are going... ...to mess that up on purpose because I saw a toad had a mushroom in the, in the audience. And we got a mushroom! You thought I messed it up uh, on accident and it wasn't good enough, but no, I saw that coming. Next time on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. We are headed to Petalburg in search of the first crystal star. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.